కవిత ఆంధ్ర అమ్మాయి లైక్ చేయండి షేర్ చేయండి సబ్స్క్రైబ్ చేయండి వన్ Why is diffusion insufficient to meet the oxygen requirements of multicellular organisms like humans? A. 1. In multicellular organisms like humans all the body cells are not in direct contact with the surrounding environment. 2. Therefore every cell of the body will not get oxygen as per need by the process of diffusion from the environment. Therefore diffusion is insufficient to meet the oxygen. Requirements of multicellular organisms. 2. What criteria do we use to decide whether something is alive? A. 1. The key factors for determining whether something is alive are breathing, respiration, transportation, and excretion. 2. A few other elements, such as growth and mobility in living beings, are also crucial. 3. A living organism can also have movements, which are not visible to the naked eye. 3. What are outside raw materials used for by an organism? A. 1. All living organisms require outside raw materials to survive and sustain themselves. 2. Animals take in food, oxygen, and water as outside raw materials. 3. Plants take in carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight as outside raw materials. 4. Oxygen is used in breaking down the food particles for all organisms. 4. What processes would you consider essential for maintaining life? A. All the living organisms perform life-maintaining processes called life. Includes various mechanisms essential for the survival of organisms. There are seven essential life processes such as reproduction, nutrition, movement, growth, excretion, respiration, and responsiveness to stimuli. 5. What are the differences between autotrophic nutrition and heterotrophic nutrition? A. Autotrophic nutrition. 1. Food is synthesized from simple, inorganic raw material such as CO and water. 2. Presence of green pigment. chlorophyll is necessary 3 food is generally prepared during daytime 4 all green plants and some bacteria have this type of nutrition heterotrophic nutrition 1 food is obtained directly or indirectly from autotrophs this food is broken down with the help of enzymes 2 no pigment is required in this type of nutrition 3 intake of food takes place at any time 4. All animals and fungi have this type of nutrition. 6. Where do plants get each of the raw materials required for photosynthesis? A. 3 raw materials are required by plants for the process of photosynthesis. 1. Carbon dioxide, it is obtained by plants from the Earth's atmosphere. 2. Water, it is absorbed by plants from the soil. 3. Sunlight, without sunlight photosynthesis would not be possible. 4. Chlorophyll, it's present in the leaves of plants. 7. What is the role of the acid in our stomach? A. 1. The acid in our stomach is called hydrochloric acid, HCI. The hydrochloric acid in the gastric juice breaks down the food and the digestive enzymes split up the proteins. 2. The acidic gastric juice also kills bacteria. 3. The mucus covers the stomach wall with a protective coating. 4. Acid makes the medium in the stomach acidic so as to facilitate the action of pepsin. 8. What is the function of digestive enzymes? A. 1. Digestive enzymes are chemical substances that help with the breakdown of food. 2. It works by breaking down large macromolecules such as protein, fat and carbohydrates into their smaller building blocks so that they can be absorbed by the body. 3. So, that the nutrients contained within the food can be absorbed. The three main enzymes are 4. Proteases and peptidases enzymes which break protein down into amino acids. 5. Lipase enzymes which break fat down into fatty acids. 6. Amylase enzymes which break carbohydrates such as starches and sugar into simple sugars and glucose. 9. How is the small intestine designed to absorb digested food? A. 1. 
The small intestine is the most important part of the alimentary canal for digestion and absorption of food. 2. It has three regions, a U-shaped duodenum, a long-coiled middle portion jejunum, and highly coiled ileum. 3. The innermost layer lining the lumen of the alimentary canal is the mucosa. This layer forms irregular folds, rugae, in the stomach and small finger-like foldings called villi in the small intestine. 4. These modifications increase the surface area for more absorption. Villi are supplied with a network of capillaries in a large lymph vessel called the lacteal. 5. It transports lipid molecules. The wall of the intestine is surrounded by the blood vessels which assimilate the food molecules to the different parts of the body. Page No. 24. 10. What advantage over an aquatic organism does a terrestrial organism have with regard to obtaining oxygen for respiration? A. 1. Terrestrial organisms take up oxygen from the atmosphere whereas aquatic animals obtain oxygen dissolved in water. 2. Air contains about 21% oxygen while water has 1% oxygen in dissolved state. A. Terrestrial organism is able to get several times more oxygen than an aquatic animal. 3. Air contains more O, as compared to water. Since the content of O, in the air is high. 4. So, terrestrial animals do not have to breathe faster to get more oxygen. 11. What are the different ways in which glucose is oxidized to provide energy in various organisms? A. Breaking down glucose involves two processes. In the first step, it is broken into three carbon molecules called pyruvate. The pyruvate is further broken down into energy in following different ways in various organisms. 1. Aerobic respiration. In this case, pyruvate is broken down into water and carbon dioxide along with release of energy. It commonly occurs in mitochondria of cells. 2. Anaerobic respiration. In aerobic respiration breakdown of pyruvate takes place. In presence of oxygen to give rise three molecules of carbon dioxide and water in. Pyruvate is converted into ethanol and carbon dioxide. 12. How is oxygen and carbon dioxide transported in human beings? A. Respiration. It is the process through which energy is released inside the body by taking in oxygen and removing carbon dioxide. Transportation of oxygen. 1. In our body, 97% of the total oxygen is transported via the red blood cells and the rest 3% is transported by being dissolved in the plasma. 2. Hemoglobin binds with oxygen and transports it to vario cells of the body. 3. After binding with oxygen, the hemoglobin forms a compound called oxyhemoglobin. 4. This oxygen-mixed blood is then transported to all cells of the body. 5. When the blood gives away all the oxygen to the cells, it picks up the carbon dioxide from them and transports it back to the heart. Transportation of carbon dioxide. 1. Carbon dioxide is primarily transported in the dissolved form because hemoglobin has very less affinity towards carbon dioxide. S. S. 2. In the dissolved form, carbon dioxide is given to the alveoli of the lungs and is taken. Oxygen. D. 3. Hemoglobin carries 20-25% of carbon dioxide as carbaminohemoglobin. H. 4. 70% of the carbon dioxide is transported in the form of bicarbonate ions and the rest 7% is in the dissolved state through plasma. 5. The binding of carbon dioxide or oxygen with hemoglobin is due to their partial pressure.